talk happy. So, absolutely not. <laughs> whatever you do, it will make the dog happy. If, if there is a, if what dog seeks and the what cat seeks, what I was saying. No. But if they are different, Vedanta comes back and tells you that child, there is a fundamental problem. You are not seeing yourself properly. You are seeing yourself as something else. When you see yourself as something else, take the example of the cat and dog. I am trying to pamper the cat. Right? I am trying to please the cat. I am trying to feed the cat this much food. That may not be good enough for the dog. That may not be entertaining to the dog. And I will curse everybody right from the doctor to my wife. What is happening here? What is happening here? This is the problem. So if there is a problem in that fundamental perception, if there is a problem in understanding myself properly, everything else is going to fall apart. Vedanta comes back and make an assertion. Right now, you and I don't know. But we know that we are not fully happy. We know that we are not fully content. That much we know. Why we don't know? And how? What, what is our solution? Typical solution. Go and grab more and more, struggle more and more, hoping that when I retire, I'll be happy. Feed the cat more. Right. Feed the cat more. Some people find a consolation. What? Going to heaven will make me happy. Sadhguru in his one of the talk, right? This heaven is an escape route. <laughs> Yes. It is an escape route. So, you try everything. Swami Dayananda used to say, when you go to heaven, heavenly problems are waiting for you. <laughs> right? So true. You don't know what problems are, they might be there. Yeah. So, imagine if you are looking at the God always. <laughs> there is no change for the God, right? God won't change. Human being, at least after there will be some, the hair will turn gray or the skin will change. God means no change. After some time you'll feel bored. <laughs> this is what happens. Now be, be realistic. Don't take the escape route. So, but Vedanta comes and gives us a hope. Vedanta tells that, hey, there is a small problem here. You are not seeing yourself properly. When you don't see yourself properly, what is going to happen? What you think you need is going to be totally different. Imagine you think that you're a cat. What is going to happen? You seek cat food. You seek whatever that is entertaining to the cat. But being a human being, that won't give you security or happiness at all. So when you see yourself as a different person, you will not find that happiness and contentment. Of course, you'll get some fleeting moments of joy. Otherwise, people would have suicide, I mean, committed suicide. So that fleeting moments of joys are there, but there is some fundamental problem is there. Now, if Vedanta tells that there is a fundamental problem, you are going to get that answer only in heaven. That is not practical. You, if that problem is there, Vedanta should give me a means to recover that problem, right? At least to get a glimpse of that solution. So that's what we are going to do now. So this much is clear, right? This was the topic we talked earlier. So today what we are going to cover, we talked about the basic problem. Now, what is the solution? You don't see something properly. What is the solution? You need to have a process to see that properly. Correct? What was the problem we discussed last week? Couldn't see I'm not seeing the snake properly. Sorry, the rope properly. Right. So I need to have a torch to see that rope properly. So how do I employ a means of knowledge so that I can see myself properly? How do I, let me repeat that sentence once again. This is extremely critical. What I'm telling is the essence of Vedanta. How do I employ a means of knowledge so that I can see not Vijay properly 
or not Kailash ji properly or not Rohit ji properly. I can see myself properly because the problem is what? I am not seeing myself properly. When I am not seeing myself properly, the way I think, the way I feel, the way I act, the way I relate with the world, everything is based on my perception. If I think myself as a cat, I will be relating to the world as a cat. But if, so how do I fix and correct that self-perception? That's what we are focused. If I need to see myself properly, I need to employ a means of knowledge. So that's what we are going to talk. Please ask any questions immediately because this needs to be understood, not believed in. Right? This needs to be understood, not believed in. Okay. So this is the problem. I see myself as an inadequate person, insecure, not fully contented. And typically what I do, I try to acquire a process to make sure make myself happy. And over a period of time, I realize that no, that's not going to happen. I give up. Typically what happens, they call it as the middle age crisis. Till middle age, you, you wanted to become X, Y, Z. And at the, at the time of the middle age, you shift that your child. Correct? Whatever I couldn't achieve, you wanted to see your child achieve. So now the Vedanta comes and tells me here that, hey, the basic problem is slightly different. You didn't understand yourself properly. When you, <laughs> you don't understand yourself properly, how can you, how can you feel properly? How can you think properly? How can you act properly? And how can you relate properly? And above all, how can you feel secure and happy? Even if I get security, it's a cat security because I felt myself as a cat. So now, this problem is established. So this is very important, right? We are going in a very systematic fashion, right? We understood the goals. We understood that most of the goals we pursue is not going to make us happy. And then we talked about the problem. And we, when we talked about Vedanta's assertion. So if Vedanta is making an assertion, what the solution? What is the solution? Three things. What is the problem? Error in perception. Perception about Self. myself. I don't see myself properly. That is the problem. And what is the solution? Correct myself. Have proper vision, right? Try to understand myself properly. And how do I understand my, myself properly? In that example, I don't see the rope properly. These are stock examples, right? Sure. These are the age old examples. This snake and rope, ghost and post, all these are called stock examples of Vedanta. So if I want to see the rope, I need to eliminate my understanding that it is a snake and I need to correctly perceive as a rope. For that, I need to employ a means of knowledge. That's what it is. Use proper means of knowledge to understand myself. Is this clear? The basic problem is error in understanding myself. Solution is understand myself properly. How? Use a means of knowledge. Now let's talk about the means of knowledge. What are the means of knowledge available to a human being? So in Sanskrit, we call that as pramana. Have you heard that word? In local vernacular, it means will or something like that. In Malayalam, it is proof. proof. Right? Proof. Proof. So in Sanskrit, prama means knowledge. Prama means knowledge. Prama plus karana equal to pramana. Prama karana. Karana means what? Instrument. Instrument. Or means of knowledge. Means or instrument. So in Sanskrit, there are some two things. One is called karana. That karanam is the natural instruments which is available to you. And then something is called upakarana. Upakarana means that yes. enhances the power of a karana. Mm. So if you have an eye, you can use a glass to enhance the vision. 
few of you have the glasses here. Right. Why? What? What exactly the glass does? Eye glass does. It will enhance the vision of your eyes. So the karanam, the the bahya karanam, or the karanam means your sense organs. Eyes, ears, nose, touch, skin, and taste. Taste. Now the question is, you are seeing me. How? Through the eyes. Through the eyes. Through the eyes. And you are hearing me. Through the ears. Even if you have eyesight, if your ears are not working, you cannot hear me. So, I am going to highlight one more word. This is very important. For gaining knowledge. Okay? Think, think carefully. For gaining knowledge, you have to use appropriate means of knowledge. I cannot use eyes to unhear. I cannot use tongue to see. see. I cannot use ears to taste. So appropriate use of pramana is must requirement for gaining knowledge. How will, how will somebody who is uh, very ordinary mm. yeah, man. Mm. how he, he will he get all this knowledge about one about self yeah second about uh, the appropriate tools to employ yeah right so now we are all here mm. after treading so much of path and I, know, I, I consider myself as, as a very ordinary person right, right? but uh, appropriate no, we are, yeah, yeah, we are yeah. still ourselves are ordinary. I am not saying no, but there are another, another seven billion people who are absolutely ignorant of any of this. Yeah. So, I mean, what what happens and how? Does <laughs> I think, I think yeah. when you say ordinary people, you're talking like a poor Masses. and other people section, right? Not necessarily no, not poor. Necessarily. Right now, right? There are you go to any bar, there will be literally packed. Mm -hmm. And you look at them, they're all knowledgeable. I mean, in terms of educated yeah. people who are capable of folding any kind of um, tool that they want, really, right? Mm -hmm. To employ, to go and study and all that. But they're not doing that. I have the standard answer for women's uh, Kailash. So if you look at the Maslow's hierarchy, right? It's a pyramid. Right. How many, if, what, what is the size of the pyramid at the bottom of? Yeah, that that part I understood, yeah. there, I see. but even see, most this, this people, country, most even in this country, most of the people are after artha and kama. They still think that artha and kama is going to make them completely happy and contented. So until they yeah. they are satiated, yeah. Once they realize that, then only they come. And I was like that. Most of us were like that, right? We think that. Gaining and acquiring is going to make me more happy, more contented. Gaining and acquiring is required. I'm not saying that it is bad. Not at all. Because some people think that, okay, tomorrow on <laughs> giving it up everything. No. You need money. You need uh, everything. But you have to look at proper places. So that means the other day I put something called mumukshuttam, right? Mm -hmm. The word. Only after some time people realize and manushyanam sahasreshu. So like, even with the realization that I'm not happy with these things, yeah, is not enough because not now enough. I come to a point. Yeah, well, I'm not happy with these yeah. things, but I don't know yeah. how to get happiness. Yeah, but that's 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 where we, most of us are. Okay. So what I'm saying is that that's why Vivekananda said, right? You have to spread this Vedanta because uh, if you really look at this now, I have an opportunity to study Vedanta. Just rewind 200 years back. Yeah. Uh, even living in India, you don't have access to this at all. You have to go to a Himalaya, Rishikesh to get this studied. But so, uh, yeah. so, so I'm sorry, yeah. Rajesh. So how how would would this answering your question would help you actually? Let's say how would that help you? No, the, uh, well, here is my reasoning uh, for asking that question. Right? This this knowledge. Uh, or the tools for acquiring this knowledge was freely available, was given to rishis. 
for a purpose to elevate human beings for particular but if it is not available to a common man like you said uh, somebody had to go right now we have internet books access all that but 200 years ago somebody would may not have access yeah. or may not be able to go to rishikesh or read sanskrit yeah it is expanding but i think uh, we as a community also fail to take this knowledge to masses and it is happening right now but uh, swami chinmayananda was a yeah. revolutionary in that yes. but i think even even other even we are actually not benefited no, yet no. Yeah. we are all still under the no, i am i am still in exactly. the dark every one of us is still under the impression my, my thing so, is this is something like oh my god this is mm-hmm. fort knox it was right next door you know mm-hmm. i had the key <laughs> but now i don't know how to open the key yeah, no, but so, all this while earlier on earlier on how many people had this kind of education as in like only the brahmins could learn with the vedas and stuff like that that was how it was right only and they wouldn't uh, impart the knowledge to anybody That's no, how, that is that, not that, true. That, that's, but that's a debatable question. No, but I so, think even even before last year, let's see, we are pursuing this only Thursday evening, one and a half hour here, right? Is, right. If we think really, every minute of our life would have pursued that. Yes. That means still it's not open yet. Our for no, no, it's not. So I'm not there yet to talk about hundred other people yet. That is correct. Right. Correct. So let, we need to lift lift ourselves first. That is. That's what my experience. That is. I I totally agree yeah. with you on that. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's a valid question. My 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 thing is, is such a rich no, it's, it's, uh, body of when when such a big solution is available, why you are going after all the other things. That's why why wasn't it trivial? I mean, why wasn't it given out to people? Is what you're asking, right? Yeah. All no, those, all those, those are other uh, debates. Let's continue, right? So, but I'm also going. Uh, yeah. I'm also going all other things that day. Yeah. Because I'm not putting full effort. If it, if I consider it really as valuable, I would have put full effort into this. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I, myself, I'm not doing that. Because the reality is it's not hit you yet. I myself, I'm not doing that that day. Yeah. So. Let's come back to the topic. So, what I was saying is that you have to understand yourself properly, and for you to gain any knowledge, that's what I was telling, right? Remember, just pay full attention because this is very important. This understanding is very important. You have to use appropriate means of knowledge. i was telling you that even if you have the best eyes in the world you can see the food but you won't know what exactly is the taste so for but even if you have the best taste bud in the world you may not be able to see so what i was trying to highlight was one simple obvious thing which people always misses you have to use appropriate means of knowledge to gain proper knowledge agree right so for every point you have to agree otherwise that we can debate that point any amount of time so now let's talk about in the world for a for a knowledge seeker what are all the means of knowledge available the first in sanskrit they are called there are three categories vedanta called six i will enumerate six but i would like to put that under three major buckets pratyaksha anumana and the third called shabda pramana or agama i'm going to elaborate on that this is what we need to understand it pratyaksha means what direct experience direct perception direct perception anumana means inference agama literally means vedas or shabda pramana means testimony or the words of a master or the scriptural knowledge or even a scientific evidence we can call that so let me elaborate each one of that it is important to understand each one of the properly pratyaksha there is a famous sutra in patanjali yoga sutra which explains this brilliantly pratyaksha anumana agama pramana that's it seventh sutra pratyaksha anumana agama pramana pramana these are the three pramanas you already understood what is pramana right prama karana and in a, an organ or an instrument that gives knowledge is called pramana and three types of pramanas are there pratyaksha anumana agama if you really go to look at vivek chudamani or the traditional vedantic book you will see six i'm going to explain that six but you don't have to complicate so it's agama and shabda is the same yeah agama veda means veda is known as shabda pramana 
Vedas are came in the form of shabdas, words. words. So let's explain. Pratyaksha means what? It is your sense organs. What you can see, what you can feel. You don't even need to think. When I see Rokhidji, and when my eyes capture his image, I know that he's here. I see the world, I see the TV, I see the video, I see the cloak. All such experiences, Pratyaksha. Smell, taste, touch, vision and color, and finally, the sound. These are the direct experience. Now, let me ask you a simple question. Can you believe all these Pratyaksha, Pramana? Some yeah. of them you can believe. Yeah. Yeah. Please think and answer. Can you believe everything? Not everything. You see the sun moving all the way around from east to west every day. It's a Pratyaksha experience. Correct? Mm -hmm. But that may not be correct always. So ex the, 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 it gives me and means, it's a means of knowledge, but errors in perception can happen. When Copernicus was burnt for saying, going against that, Bruno was burnt. Galileo got survived by all this. Second, Anumana. Anumana means what? Inference. I'm not seeing something directly. But I'm inferring something. What is the stock example? So uh, <laughs> I'll give you the stock example, the, the traditional Veda in the example. Smoke and fire. Smoke and fire. There is a I see a smoke in a mountain. What can I imply? There could be a fire. There could be fire. All the scientific evidences, right? Inferential. I infer something. So when I look at my watch, it is going to say that, okay, you burned 330 calories. How? This ring is my direct perception. From that ring, I can always infer. Archimedes, when he, when he was drowning, suddenly he felt what? Loss of weight. From there, whole analysis, second stage analysis, third stage analysis, and he came up with what? Loss of weight equal to weight of water displaced. Every scientific discovery is based on inference. Inference means logical connection. So when I say, think, this is very interesting topic. Think through that. This pramana itself can be taken talk for four or five hours. When I say, I see a smoke. I can always infer that there is a fire. But you see me now here, right? It's your direct experience. Can you conclude that it is raining outside? If I say, you see me, therefore, it's raining outside. If I say that, that's not inference. Because why? It's not connected. There's no logical connection. If you see me every time, then if it is raining, every probably time. you can make that connection. So an inference is not something ridiculously See, right? So it's very important. So it has to be logically connected. So in Vedanta, if you look at Vivek Chudamani, such books, they divide this into another three. So Anumana, then they call like uh, Upamana. Upamana means what? Suppose you are saying that, that means, you know, in Kerala, we go to Silent Valley. One animal you can see in Silent Valley is bison. Imagine that you don't know bison. I can explain you, right? I can see that. If I say that the bison is like a frog, you look for a frog and you will never see a bison. But if I say that, you may see an animal called a bison and that bison may look, look like a water buffalo. So then you can look for a water buffalo. Then the moment I say that, you may get a small picture in your mind. That knowledge took place. Even though you haven't, it's not an inference. It's not, it's, it's, it's a second stage of inference. That's why I combined everything into that inference. But it is not direct perception, but it's a, it's it's a, a knowledge important. Right. So now, why Vedanta differentiating is that 
Now, if you go there and you come back and say that, okay, I saw an animal. It's not exactly look like a water buffalo. If it is exactly like a water buffalo, it is water buffalo. It is water buffalo. So that upamana means it won't be hundred percent matching. But sadrishyam, that is the term used. Then uh, there is something called arthapati. Arthapati. Arthapati means there are two switches here. That's a classic example. This is means I'll tell you the stock example, but uh, there are two switches. You want to switch on that light. One switch illumines that portion of the lamps. Another switch illumines this portion of the lamp. You, you don't know what exactly it is. You did put the first switch. The light came there. Naturally, you can play. The other one, the other one is perfect. That is what is a thing. So they classify this as a separate one. Wow. And there is one more called Anupala. Anupalati means what? Every perception implies something. Right? You are not seeing uh, Pradeepji here today. See. I am not seeing Pradeepji here. So, I can infer what? So he's not here. He's not there. I am not seeing him. So, it's not that I am perceiving him, but I can always note the absence. That is Anupalati. We don't have to go to that level. Just keep in mind there is all these can be put under the bracket of inference. All these are inference, logical inferences. So pratyaksha anumana. Now the third category. But so much of scientific thinking, uh, thinking and the yeah. approach has been already amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I just quoted these yeah. arthapati, anupalati, upamana, etc. Just to show how deep they are going. Yeah. The, the clarity of their thinking is amazing. Yeah. That's really stunning, that is. Yeah. Yeah. That time you're talking <laughs> about <laughs> so many thousands of years back. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is a stock example for Upamana? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. The stock example for Anthapati is uh, Devadatta. This is, I'm quoting yeah. from the Nyaya Shastra. Okay. All these stock examples come from a branch of knowledge called the Nyaya. Devadatta is not eating at all, but his weight is not coming down. Hmm. What does that mean? He's eating at the night. By some means. But I'm not. <laughs> That's a stock example. Yeah. Pumana, there is a lot of examples. Let's. <laughs> the answer is the same as logic. Yeah. <laughs> it's all logic. That's why I bracket. That's why Patanjali. Clubbed all those three to put together what? Inference. Now there is a third category of knowledge. It is called Shabda Pramana or Vedas or the scriptures. So Vedanta comes and tells you, hey, you are seeking security. You are seeking happiness. You are not getting it. Why? You are not perceiving yourself properly. And this is what is your real nature. Is that a direct experience? Means direct perception with the sense organs now? No. Right? You cannot see that with your eyes, ears, nose, tongue. You cannot infer that. So this is categorized as a body of means, a means of knowledge. Vedanta is considered as a means of knowledge. A means of knowledge that gives definite knowledge about yourself. Vedanta is considered as a definite knowledge about yourself. The stock story to illustrate this is the tenth man story. You all know the story. Ten people went for a pilgrimage and they had to cross a river. When they crossed the river, the leader of the group started counting. What? How many? Nine. 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 What did they infer? One person is missing. Missing. What did their perception, his perception remember is nine people. Inference? What? One people missing. One person drowned. <laughs> they started crying. Other person said, you don't know how to count. Let me count. He counted. Nine. 
another person did. Count. So their perception didn't give them knowledge. Inference didn't give them knowledge. And that created a huge chaos. And that created a huge insecurity that took all their happiness away. They started crying, panic attack, anxiety, all these things came. A person who is going through a panic attack or a person who is going through depression, you cannot say that their depression is not valid. Yeah. For him, one person is missing, that's a legitimate reason for being Sad. depressed. So when one person get depressed in modern days, we say that why this fellow is depressed? This is nothing, right? Only he knows what he's going to do. <laughs> Whether he see things properly and get depressed, that's a different matter. But, but there is some what he is sees is, why he is giving him a depression and that is legitimate. Right. So the person who is in the box, so he thinks differently who is out of the box, right? Right. <laughs> right. So Look at your daughters and children, sons. Right? Sometimes they say that I'm removed from a one, one from a text message group, depressed. <laughs> Correct. This yes. is some legitimate examples. Small, small example. The cyberbullying is so big now. For you, come. On. <laughs> but look at this. Look at what that child is seeing. Yeah. I'm being left out. I'm being ignored. And not worth, and all these things put together is good enough for a depression. So these guys got completely depressed, and panic attack was there. Now you go there as a spiritual person, you say that pray to God. Any amount of prayer is not going to make them out of depression. Now another person comes. Why don't you do Raj Yoga? You do all the asanas, pranayamas, mudras, bandhas. Still, the problem. The prayer won't solve the problem. The meditation won't solve the problem. A lecture about the uncertainty of human life. It's not the, the only solution is what? Knowledge. Knowledge. And how can you get the knowledge? Using the right tools. Somebody has to tell them that, okay, you are the 10th man. And he needs to. Figure that out. So you may ask, then where exactly this yoga, meditation, prayer comes? But the person has to be ready to listen to the person, right? A passerby came in. He is telling that, you fool, you are the tenth man. <laughs> the Shamaha Asti. That time the realization comes. What? That I am the tenth. I am the tenth man and I was a stupid. This is the realization come. But for me to listen to his word, if I am in a panic attack mode, if I am in an anxious mode, he might be saying, you are the gentleman, but he won't, it won't register in his mind. So to make his mind listen to the teaching or digesting, that's where all the sadhanas comes in. But the problem, the problem of insecurity, the problem of unhappiness, the problem of panic attack can be removed only by Knowledge. Knowing properly, knowing that I am the 10th man. So Vedanta tells that Vedanta is going to give you that knowledge that you are the 10th man. This knowledge, which is not a perception, which is not an inference, is a pramanam. Vedanta has to be considered as a pramanam. If Vedanta is considered as a pramanam, that is going to solve the problem. Otherwise, any amount of perception, direct perception, or any amount of inference will not give you the knowledge about yourself. So let me come back. We said we have three categories of pramanas, pratyaksha, anumana, and agama, or the vedas. And what pramana you have to employ for you understanding myself is the scriptural teaching, Vedantic teaching or any master's teaching to that matter. I wanted to expand to a little bit more. So any properly, um, any master's words, because Shabda Pramana means it could be the words of a master, like a Buddha, or a, uh, a master mm -hmm. that is coming tomorrow, right? 
any mas Guru Nanak or Jesus Christ or any any masters teaching properly studied would give you a definite knowledge about yourself and when you understand that definite knowledge that is going to remove all the sorrows and that gives you a certain knowledge and that is why the scripture is considered as a pramana now let me share a big anecdote because this is very important so let me cover a couple of slides also what I need to, yeah, please. I have one more ignorant yeah. question. Not ignorant questions. Um, any questions are <laughs> the, the heroes that we see today, mm -hmm. right, the Bill Gates or Federer, or whoever, right, are the ones who we idolize on a regular basis. So, somebody who has known Vedanta right, or has applied Vedanta in his life, who's in Ananda, let us mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm should be the one who we should all be worshipping and look, looking up to. But depending upon my maturity level, I look at certain people, right? So for me, if I seek how to be apparently wealthy and professionally successful, I look at, but look at Steve Jobs, who is uh, very much successful in the business life. Right. He turned into another. Right. So, no, but very few people know the Vedantic aspect of Steve Jobs because the other side of it also yeah. is people look at him as a hero he, not because of the, his Vedantic inclination correct. it is because of correct. his professional so, success so we the, the only heroes that we really see who are Vedantic and happy are people like Swami Dayanand Saraswati or Chinmayananda who we think oh those guys are not successful in you know materialistic world and they quit everything and they are happy so but that's so a different class the yeah. flaw the flaw in that question is a material success should be equal to a spiritual success, you are thinking. No, no. But the two are independent things. Okay? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So Bill Gates not necessarily should not be an example that a role model in that. If you are pursuing a material success, yes, should be a role model there. Right. He may or may not have spiritual insight as much as you have, for example. Right. But see, somebody like uh, the way I look at it is somebody, if I see somebody extremely happy. Right. So, Swami Dayanand Saraswati, straight away I know all of those. He's very happy. Yeah, but again, is, uh, your, your, your mindset is also matters, right? So, rem remember, you are caught up in the Artha Kama pursuit. Hmm. Then, whom do you look at as a hero? The same. Somebody who is successful in the also. Artha Kama domain. That's exactly what the answer is. Hmm. So, you have to be, means we need to gain maturity, like as a child, right? Uh, and somebody the other day was asking, like a child in India, who you want to be? He said, I wanted to be a, the driver of a, uh, what do you call the big machines which pull the rocks out? Yeah, the, um, whatever it is. Yeah. Earth movers. Yeah, but his perception, that is the biggest thing, right? <laughs> so then his aspiration is naturally that. When you go a little bit further, right, you may think that, okay, this is good. This is good. So. Depending upon our maturity, whom we adopt as models also will change. I guess the perception of happiness keeps correct, changing. Correct. The, the maturity, level of maturity will Because when I was a kid, I wanted to become a bus a bus conductor because he had a lot of cash. <laughs> All letting he was yeah, carrying cash. Exactly. Exactly. Right. No, that, the, or a driver. Yeah, driver. Most of the kids want to be a driver. Yeah, they all, all the kids at that time. No, because at that time, the car, the car was a luxury thing. So that's exactly it. So now come back. So what means? So I said you have to use a means of knowledge to you know yourself. And we said the, the three type categories of pramanas. The third category pramana is going to be the means of knowledge. So what I need to know? Everybody know that I exist. Nobody has to tell that Kailashji exists. It's your direct experience. So I don't need a means of knowledge to know that I exist because the very fact that I'm talking, I'm self-conscious, indicate that I exist. Now, what exactly I need to know through this means of knowledge? I call this out because this was a big confusing topic for me. That's why this slide was specifically added. All I need to know is, what am I? What I am? Am I a, means am I as I conclude? Am I as I conclude? A, a person without full security? A person without, not fully happy? Am I that person? That's the first thing we need to understand. Second thing is, am I completely insecure? Then, what are the reasons why 
and I conclude myself as insecure or unhappy. Look at the Vedantic teaching, you will see that this is exactly what is addressed. Every point, it is addressed why you feel insecure, why you feel unhappy, and how to remove that. This is exactly the scope of all the Upanishads. I'll, when we study Upanishad, you will understand it. So this is the main enquiry. And this enquiry has to happen through contemplation, chintana. It is how do you get a knowledge when I talk about that? You have to assimilate that knowledge. It is only through the mind you can assimilate it. So chinta has to be appropriate. Shankaracharya in his commentary on one of the Upanishads, he may calls out the chinta or the thoughts on this matter has to be appropriately directed. He tells there is only one visarga difference between chinta and chita. Chita means what? The fire. Yeah, the fire, the great, the, the, the great fire. Right? Right. So if chinta is not appropriate, the chita will burn your body, the chinta will burn your mind. This is what Chandra said. He is absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. So Shiva Sutra tells Jnanam Bandham. If the knowledge is not proper, <laughs> it is going to put you into bondage more proper. Exactly. So this is very important. So this the enquiry has to be focused on these questions. So the knowledge alone can dispel this problem. As I said, like any amount of meditation, any amount of yoga, any amount of any practices will not give that tenth man only knowledge. So that's why. You have to approach Vedanta as a Pramana. Now I will share one very powerful anecdote in this particular story. So I will tell my story and I will tell because this you will be able to fast forward a lot of issues when you study Vedanta. When I started reading Vedanta, which was early in my college days, uh, it was very fascinating, especially logically it was fascinating. But Never ever I could connect the dots. First of all, it was that's a big challenge. And one of the misconceptions, at least I got, especially reading these neo Vedantic textbooks, was Vedanta is a theory and meditation is a practice. When you whatever you studied will be experienced through the meditation. You can see this in many books even now. So they use an expression, in the heat of that meditation, this knowledge will be assimilated to you. <laughs> and when I started meditation, nothing happens. Because you cannot first of all focus. And the more you try to worry about to give me this experience, the more nothing will happen. But, but meditation helps for better reception. Correct. Prepares you for that. Yeah, meditation has its own spot. As I said, like... The tenth man would not have listened to the passerby if his mind is not properly. That is what we are going to see the next week. What exactly is that? So the, the physical yoga, the mental meditation yeah. and the knowledge. Yeah. That's the jnana yoga. Yeah. So in Gita we played out the part. Like karma yoga, upasana yoga and followed by this jnana. Mm. Right? Karma yoga is going to remove the mala, the impurities of the mind. And then Upasana Yoga is going to make the mind stable. Chitta Shuddhi and Chitta Stiti. Stability of the mind as well as the purity of the mind is absolute must have for this knowledge to take place. The yoga, meditation, pranayama, prayer, everything will come under that first part. And all such part are, path is called yoga. So here, this misinterpretation was there. Even now, a lot of people does that. The read means, so for me, what happened was, the luck was, I was able to have a direct interaction with Swami Dhananda Saraswati. He is one of the most learned teacher in the modern time. A lot of teachers are there. Unfortunately, what happens is, sometimes this misinterpretation becomes more popular than the actual <laughs> stuff. <laughs> So this mistake 
which is Vedanta is a theory and it's like it came from the typical British education. So you go to physics, you study say something and then you go to the lab and do the lab. So this British education gave us a feeling that you have to have a theory and practical. And typically somebody made the mistake somewhere saying that Vedanta is theory, meditation is the lab. So you go to the class, then you go home and sit and meditate. In that meditation, you will experience this. So this start the reason, root cause, Swamiji was telling me. So he was telling me his example. So you can read in his autobiography also. So he became a disciple of Swamiji Mahananda and he started teaching, studying Vedanta. He told me he took 12 years to study all these books very professionally with Shankara Pashin and everything. And he said he used to spend hours in meditation and pranayama every day. But no experience. And finally, he was even ready to give up. He said he even gave his books to the other people. Swami Chinmayananda told him, okay, why don't you make a trip? Meet some Swamiji's because sometimes you get the knowledge. So he happened to make an old India trip. Um, and in that trip, he met somebody, a disciple of Ramana Maharshi first. That's what I forgot his name. And he corrected the thinking a little bit. And he suggested him to meet a Swamiji called Pranavananda in Andhra Pradesh. You might have heard the story, right? So this Swamiji said, there is a problem with this theory practical approach. <laughs> you have to see Vedanta as a Pramana. Vedanta is a means of knowledge. You are the problem <laughs> and you are the solution. And remember, who was the problem for the 10th man? Who was the absent? Who was the person he was not counting? Himself. himself. And who is the solution? Himself. Knowing himself is the solution. The existence of himself, understanding his existence is the solution. So knowing himself is the solution. No amount of meditation is going to reveal that. Only knowledge. The beauty of the story is, first time when you listen, it looks really interesting, right? Then you would think that, oh, it's stupid. Anybody would know that, right? But as you spiritually grow and you get deeper meaning in this little by more, little by more that is. After 10 years, you listen to the story, you get even more deeper you're meaning into that, that. Yeah. it's very interesting that is actually yeah. I'm listening to the story from 96 yeah, exactly. onwards but <laughs> zillion times we heard this story <laughs> but uh, how did uh, Dayananda so, change his uh, yeah so but so he was taught by the Swami Pranavananda of Andhra Pradesh that Vedanta is the means of knowledge and Swamiji was telling me it, it, it was a big eye opener for me at least at that time so he said, like, you have to understand the role of everything, role of sadhana and role of knowledge. Sadhana is going to give you the eligibility to perceive knowledge. So in this particular example, he was just using the same example. That's why I'm quoting the same example. He said, this person who was in that panic attack mode, who was in that uh, depressed mode, this passerby came. He said, you are the tenth man. Hey, nothing man. So he said, you sit, take a deep breath. If after a few deep breaths, he said, look, you count other people are nine and you are plus one, that's a maha. <laughs> so if that breathing exercise was not done, you would never. The passerby might be crying on the top of his voice. But this fellow will not proceed. So there is a role for the meditation. There is a role for yoga. There is a role for prayer. But that can give you, that is the topic of our next class. So I'm not going to go further. But what I'm saying is that knowledge is the only means. When I say knowledge is the only means to remove the problem, don't call us as a fanatic, right? We are not saying that you have to be studying this. No, we are saying that 
knowledge about yourself is gaining knowledge about yourself is the only means only means the only means remember i'm highlighting that i'm not i'm not saying that you should believe in christ or else you will go to hell or you should follow muhammad or you should go to hell no that's not what i'm talking i'm saying that you have to gain this knowledge from a qualified master not like people like me like a qualified master we have to use the scriptures in this particular case yeah if the that's what buddha said right if the buddha is not available follow the dharma yes and, so, and we have to pursue also we need from all right Perfect. so these stories are like a pointers this 10th man story is pointing to something we fail to see it suppose where is the light coming from if i show you like that right then if you look in it only at the pointer you would never be able to see that yeah so this 10th man story is also pointing to something you would never see that until you grow actually see that right, right? and as you pursue more and more then slowly start thinking oh my god what is this communicating actually right. that's where we, our growth occurs yeah. uh, i guess yeah. you have to be in a frame of mind to accept Correct. the other person that's what the next week right. that is the topic what is the qualification or eligibility to use this means of knowledge so you may have the eyes but there is no light there or your eyesight is little bit bad you forgot to bring your glasses glasses right. so i might be sitting there you might be seeing is it rajesh or vijay or right? right so there has to be certain condition for any means of knowledge to work so next week what we are going to talk is what are the prerequisites for vedanta to become work as a praman so today i proved or i established the point that you need a means of knowledge to know yourself and vedanta is a means of knowledge so next week we will see that is it was hundreds of people are studying vedanta only a few people get self realization why yeah. that will be the natural question yes. that's what we need to address next week it is called atikaratva atikaratva means don't say that atikara in hindi is a different meaning right. in the aspect means eligible eligible how do you eligible to use this pramana so for you to you for you to use the eyes as a pramana there are some eligibility what your eyes should be working second there should be enough yeah. light if that light is not there you may have the eyes the object might be lying in front of you still you can make proper so how do i light the scene in front of me so that and how much also too much light also is yeah. so how light. how much appropriate light i can put so that it's the means of knowledge should work so means of knowledge two things one is you have to use appropriate means of knowledge for appropriate knowledge for understanding taste i cannot use vedanta right i have to use perception inference and veda appropriately and second thing is every means of knowledge has to have some prerequisites for giving you the necessary knowledge so that's what it is so this slide will tell that vedanta is a pramana self knowledge that is what it gives the self knowledge is a peculiar knowledge because it is the knowledge about myself typically all the knowledge is outside interesting you put in the peculiar knowledge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no that's what i felt <laughs> it's a peculiar knowledge yeah no but uh, there in that and the so did he drop meditation at that point or what yeah yeah he, he, he no he didn't drop the meditation okay. he did the meditation for mental stability other reasons okay. then he came back and he said he restudied the entire scripture in this light yeah then all the doubts the first approach what happens is that's a lab that is the lab if you say that meditation is a lab then you are always trying to see something there, there. Right. then obviously you see that if you thinking of a pink rabbit you would definitely see the pink rabbit there, there. Yeah. so that is the flaw yeah. there and lot yeah. of people say they have got this vision that vision etc if you think about something you will get that so don't believe patanjali yoga sutra when you study patanjali said you may get lot of experience you may see krishna in your dream or in your meditation is it krishna or is it your thought <laughs> so 
just be realistic and demystify all these things. That is, Vedanta means correct thinking. That is another thing. So just two more minutes, we'll stop. Vedanta says you are the solution. You are the problem and you are the solution. This is a famous sentence used by Swan there. I really like it. You are the problem, you are the solution. Now, last point is to become the solution because you are the problem, you are the solution. To become that solution, you need to put some effort. <laughs> <laughs> what is that effort? We are going to see that next week. Yeah. So that's where I'll stop. This is really beauty actually. Yeah. See, only because you are asking question, you ended up here actually. Yeah. If you had asked that, that question, then it would not have been here actually. You would have just sat at home. <laughs> so, recap. First thing is, fundamental problem is wrong perception. When there is wrong perception, the solution is correct perception. For correct perception, I need to employ correct means of knowledge. The means of knowledge is Pratyaksha, Anumana and Agama. And here, for knowing myself, what exactly is the means of knowledge I should use? Vedanta. Agama or the Veda. So, Vedanta is a means of knowledge. And now, next week, we will talk Ajit. what are the basic qualifications for me to use Vedanta as a means of knowledge. Viveka, Vairagya, Shakka, Sampati, Mokshu. I'll, I'll explain that next week. That, that's good. <laughs> then, the Week after that, we need to talk about how do I gain that qualification? See, you wanted to say you are going to do master's in computer science. Then I say that for you to go to the master's in computer science, physics 104 or 404, I don't know how they call it, you have to do the 101. Now, how do you do the 101? A proper path is given. Sequencing is coming out now, right? Because if that sequencing is not there, it is very difficult. Okay, good. Any other questions? The question of the tenth person. Mm -hmm. How, how once you real, how do you realize that you are the problem? That's the issue. That's the tenth. The, the person, the passerby came. So in. that is where that the third one, which says, you know, use that as a pramana to correct, correct. The pramana was his words. Right. Shabdo. So now I know that I am the problem, but I have to be in the state of mind to listen to him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's what I'm, that's because exactly. I am already agitated that yeah. I can't find that. That's the exactly what right. I'm next week and the week after that we are talking. I think you are coming to the right. Right question you are asking. Right no, because question. I'm, I'm totally yeah. agitated yeah. and I'm in, you know, and yeah. no, then You are worried about your past, and all these insecurities. Should, I, should I calm myself, you know, right. with the other ones before I and listen to this person? You can listen, but that is or means you can. It will give you a paroksha and like it will tell you an assurance that okay, there is a problem for your solution. But how to gain that solution? You have to practice. So what exactly is that practice? We are going to say that. You're thinking accurately. No, no, exactly. Because, because, because like, accurate. like Dhanan Swamiji did. I mean, like he yeah. he went back and started reading again after yes, he yes. did this calming himself yeah. kind of thing, right? But so, that's exactly what we are going to talk. Mm. And uh, uh, since you're attending Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, 95% of the Bhagavad Gita is making you ready for this knowledge. So let's listen to the final prayer and start. Oh. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachati Purnamada Purnameva Vashishati Om Shanti Shanti Good. Okay, so this is probably the most important lesson in our 18 lesson because if this is, if there is a doubt in this, come on. Twelve years of waste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I really want to thank Swami Dayananda for his wonderful insight into this because people like us are not traditionally trained. He made the difference because he gave us that
he filled that gap for us because that is where the true master comes into picture yeah it's great that actually you know you're asking the right questions i can see that actually so i'm i hope that you know you 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 really find time to come and just participate in the discussion in future weeks Gosh. i know there are so many problems from family job everything <laughs> you know this um, very nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> distractions <laughs> there's so many distractions right and so many priorities are there it's